I knew the run will be cool for me. So we discussed a lot with my coach and we said, okay, so I will do really quick single. But mentally it was hard also to see that all the other women were doing like touch and go. And then you are the last one on the on the lane. So then you have to run, to run, to run. But in progress. Yeah, I, I think it was so funny when I um when I wrote you, I thought, oh, she's from Switzerland. She speaks German. And then <laughs> I think 90% of people are thinking this. And besides that, because I'm also living like really uh in between the French part side and the German part side. So it's really like a bit, but not enough to be able to to speak here in German, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. With all the other athletes from Switzerland, it was the opposite. I wrote them in English and then, the, then they <laughs> wrote a sentence in German back. Yeah, we can talk uh, in, in German, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I think I will be the only one who will say no. In fact, we have to speak in English. <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. So we have a bigger audience. <laughs> but I, I, I find it so fascinating that, you know, Switzerland is such a such a tiny country on the map and there are so many like really good athletes like coming out of this tiny part of the european landscape yeah. why do yeah. you think that is what's what's in the water in switzerland um maybe discipline because i know that you are quite strict with everything so maybe that but i know also the german part When I started CrossFit, all the people told me, yeah, you will see the German athletes, the Swiss German athletes will be really, really uh, at a good level. And it's it's true that there is a small difference between the German side and the French part side. I don't know really? if this is the mentality or I don't know, but yes. Wow. Do you know at which side um, Roger Federer is from? German, German side as well. Really? Okay. That's weird. Does he speak German? Yeah. I think yeah. I can't. I can't imagine this guy speaking German. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's speaking a lot of languages, but German for sure. Yeah. That would be weird hearing him uh, speak German because I think I've watched this guy. I've been a huge tennis fan in my in my teens. Mm -hmm. I think I watched this guy for like I don't know ten, twelve years. Yeah. And then, but I never heard him like talk German he always talks English in interviews and stuff <laughs> that would be I so heard... weird like hearing him but I think I saw him uh, in some advertising speaking in German really but of course yeah in official I think uh, much he will speak in, uh, in English yeah man that would be so weird <laughs> <laughs> it would be like you know um, when you when you watch movies with um Oh, what's the English word for for synchron stimme? Like, like in Germany they um, synchronize like American television shows with German language. Yeah. And when they... you when you when you watch it in, in original in English and then switch to the German, it's so weird. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. That... No, there, there is something wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be the same if I hear him speak like German. I was like, oh, is that a robot or what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, but Alina, I watched you when I was in Berlin at the semifinal. I um, saw you for the first time competing. Yeah. And how was Berlin for you? Tell me about your, your semifinal experience. It was really crazy. <laughs> It was really, really crazy for me because um, to go to the semi was like really my main objective of this year. I was working hard really for this. So I think it was like... Uh, quite unreal when I, I came here and during in fact the whole weekend I didn't really realize that what was yeah that, that I was here and that I was competing uh, next to like big big names so I think it took me like one week really to realize all of these things yeah one week after you finally like realized oh I've been there <laughs> Yeah, and in fact, during the weekend, I was like, yeah, it's so long. It's so long because there is, of course, a roller coaster with all the events. And on Monday, I was like, oh, it's done. And then I really, I think 
was needed like few few days really to realize like that it it was done. So it was really like a strange feeling. It was like like a dream during the weekend, and then you were like, okay, so now, okay, I, I work for that, and now it's done. So you have to work again to work harder for one year to be better. So yeah, that was really quite unreal. Yeah, I, I'm like really fascinated by that stuff. Like if you if you don't make it to the games, that's that's the the biggest event. And I find it's in that sport, you guys, you have so um, you don't have much like competitions to to show your your stuff. And if you yeah, if you stop at semis, you it's the next year, the next yeah. chance. You know, yeah. is that is that hard to like? Uh, I don't know the word to um, enjoy the event with that in mind. Um, Or are you so focused that you you block this even out? Uh, because for me, it's a. I think for some athletes, it's a bit different. Because for me, I'm doing, yeah, quite a few competition even during the years. Of course, mm. this these competitions are not so big than the semis. Uh, yeah. So for me, it's also like important to have this because it's too hard for me to say, okay, so now are we just working hard and just and just like cross the fingers that it will be okay for the semis and uh, and in one weekend you you're done so for me it's important also to see a bit my fitness level during all the year and to compete against the people that will be also at the semis so i have also to yeah i can see a bit where are my weakness my my point of improvement and things like this but of course during the semis like i i i cannot say that it was like a full uh, enjoyment because you know that this is the times uh, where you have to show what you was working on during like mm -hmm. one year. So it's like a lot of pressure. And I think even more for people that are really um, going there for, for making to the games. So for me, it was clear that it was too hard <laughs> this year at least yeah, to go to the game. So even with that in mind, even if I don't have the same pressure than Laura Horvath, for example, um, the pressure is like really, really, really high. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's really like an amazing competition, but you cannot like smile during the event. You you really have to give everything because it's the only uh, days where you can show what you worked on during the year. So a lot of pressure. Exactly. And did you did you have any goal coming in? Um, no. Because for me, it was really like to be able to qualify for the semi, it was really like my dream, my goal. So it was already like almost done when I, I managed to, to make it. And uh, I think it was, if, yeah, the quarter where the same, yeah, the same amount of stress than during the semis. Because for me, the quarter would be like really, uh, you, you do, you make it or not. So, and at the semi, I knew that I could, couldn't go to the games. So, But yeah. Yeah, interesting. At which placement did you um get into the, the semi? What placement did you do at the quarters? Uh the quarters I finished at the ranking 40 and during mm -hmm. the semi 30. Yeah, that's that's quite good. So you make up like 10 placements. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How is that in the quarters? Do you um Do you, uh, I guess like everyone waits to the last second to submit your scores. So you yeah. basically have no idea until everything yeah. is done. Yeah, exactly. So I uh, I had some some ideas because uh, my coach already told me because he's coaching some yeah few athletes that also want to do uh, to go to the summit. So I had few ideas on which time should I uh, reach for or this kind of thing. But at the end, you you never know. <laughs> So of course it's like yeah. a lot of pressure also with with this. So it's also a, a bit of strategy because you cannot uh, you 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 can put your score, but no one is really doing it. So you really have to wait until the last moment. But yeah, I think on top of that, the most stressful thing during the quarter were really to make sure that the videos are correct, that they are uploaded, mm -hmm. that there is no no rep. So this was like really really stressful because in fact I was 
of course, I was doing it really seriously, but I could not ima imagine imagine it that it would be so strictly reviewed. And so, yeah, it was really like, okay, so in fact, this is really something serious because I did I did one time the open uh, two years ago, and it was really like just to see my level because I just started CrossFit three years ago, so it was the first time I was doing like a competition. That's then, insane, by the way. That's insane that you're only like three years in. Yeah. And uh, and then I was doing the quarter a bit like this for the first day. And then directly on the morning in the second day, I received an email that I had few no reps on the, I, I think four no reps on the ring muscle up. And yeah. it cost me like 40 seconds, which was like <laughs> a lot. So I, yeah, I lost really a lot of, uh, of placement because of that. I was like, okay, so I really need to be, much more like strict with all my reps, with the videos and with everything. And uh, yeah, this was the most stressful uh, experience I had during the, the quarter, really the, the videos, the, yeah, the rep that has to be really like perfect. So it was yeah. quite, uh, quite stressful, yeah. I can imagine. But that's a good thing that you um, learned that lesson early in your, in your path and not now, you know? Yeah, true. So you already know, okay, I've done this once and they give me penalties, so I better yeah. make sure that nothing happens. Yeah, That's yeah. Pretty exactly. good, you know? Because and I did didn't you... know exactly that it, had, it will be reviewed because I had really no idea I was doing it like this. Yeah. Never, never, yeah, no one told me that, ah, be careful because your score maybe might be reviewed. So when I received this email, I was like, okay, so in fact, I will not like be under the radar. In fact, I will be really observed, so I need to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. What do you think about, like, the European semi was the last semi final? Was that was that an advantage, or were you like, oh my god, I I want to start now, I want to do that? <laughs> uh, I think I really like a uh, competition where you don't have any idea of the workout until the last mm -hmm. moment, because I'm I'm quite good at. Uh, like doing new stuff uh, without a lot of training, for example, new skills. So yeah. when I saw the workouts, I was like, mm, okay, so we have a lot of time to train. So I have to train on this. And at the end, I think we had like three weeks. So during the three weeks, it's not anymore doing CrossFit because you love CrossFit and you are doing a lot of things. It's really like focusing on every workout every day. So mm -hmm. at the end, you really want to start because you really want to do CrossFit, which is a lot more uh, yeah, diversified yeah. than only this uh, workout. Yeah, you only focus on the, on these workouts. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you uh, like compare your um your training scores to the previous um semifinals, or was it just like with the uh, other regions? You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. But it's not always a good idea when you see that people are doing how. I had 60 burpees over the, the box. So yeah. I was like, oh, I don't think I would be able to do that. So it was quite insane. But I knew also that some people will be really, really specialists at some workouts. So you don't have maybe to check the first two or three uh, best athletes. But to have like an ID, it's uh, it's always good. But I also noticed that at the end in uh, in US, you see that in average, the people are so much stronger. For example, the average mm -hmm. snatch for the woman was like crazy in comparison with Europe. But I think yeah. in Europe, we were like much better in conditioning than in US. So it's a bit different, I think, depending on the region. But it's always a good uh, good thing to compare and to see where you where you are. Yeah. I think there you guys, you're like totally different. I talked to that um, with Bronislav Olenkovic. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I tested all the workouts and compared them to the other regions. And I was like, he told me that he was really calm during the competition because he knew, okay, if I execute like I do in training, I would be fine. Yeah. So it was really like calming him down. And on the other side, I talked to Yellow Hoster and he was like, yeah, I knew if I execute, it would be good. But maybe all the other guys in Europe are just fitter than all the other regions and I'm fucked. So yeah. <laughs> he was stressed out. So totally different like opinions on that. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. And when you saw the workouts, did you, did you thought, oh, this is good for me? Or were you like, mm, that's going to be a hard weekend? 
<laughs> so first I was really just reading in between the line. I say, oh, okay, ring muscle up. Okay, a lot of running, a lot of conditioning. And then when I checked a bit, I was like, okay, the so conditioning will be with really heavy sled, sled uh, pull. Okay, the ring muscle up will be with a weighted jacket. So I was like, mm, in fact, it's good, but not so good. So at the end, all the workouts were a bit uh, for heavy people. So I was like, ah, mm -hmm. it will be tough. <laughs> it will be really tough. Yeah. Yeah. I was a, a bit bummed. Like for the first workout, I was like, oh, this is going to be the conditioning piece, but it turned out that the sled is the most important of the, of the, okay. of the workout. So I was like, ah, oh, okay. But it was kind of like with everything on that semi, like everything was, there was a twist to everything, you know, there was a heavy snatch, but you have to run first. There is, There isn't conditioning, but there's a heavy object in it. Like everything yeah. was kind of kind of switched. I find it really interesting. Yeah, that one. It, was, it was really interesting. But on the paper, I was like, first, ah, it would be cool. And then when I checked really the weight and uh, deeply all the movements, I was like, ah, okay. So it will be some some movement will be cool, but some movement will be really hard. Especially for example, the Linda workout. So this one, I knew that it will be so hard for me. First, I checked yeah. the dumbbell weights. I was like, I'm not sure to do one rep with these weights. And uh, then I saw the other region. I was like, wow, in fact, the women are like sprinting on this workout. And I remember for me, I was like surviving. So it was like, for me, this this workout was really tough. Mentally, physically, it was really tough. Yeah. Which placement did you, did you take it, Linda? I don't know. <laughs> not sure that I, I want know. to see, but I think it really, really, it it was not a good one for me. Really, not at all. Yeah, but were you relieved when it was over? Like I did that. Okay, let's move on. Uh yeah, but I was I was really <clears throat> really sad because I was in fact the first day went really good for me, so I was like really in a good placement, and at the end it was really stressful because the second days the second day will be really heavy, and I will be with the really, really good uh, woman. So it was really stressful for me because I knew, for example, with the Linda, that I, I knew that I have to keep the pace I trained uh, during the, the, the days before. But at the end, when all the girls were like really running between all the elements, I was like, okay, but for me, I need so much more break and everything. So I tried to keep my pace, but I saw also all these other girls really sprinting and it was like so hard. Because of course, at the end, I, I tried to keep the pace, but I was like accelerating, and yeah, it yeah, it was really a bad idea. Even if I I did almost, yeah, I think I, I was better during the summit than during the training, but at the end, it was like still catastrophic uh, <laughs> placement. Yeah. Idea, so, and but still good if you like. Yeah. Yeah. And also, for example, for the snatch, which was also on the second day. I knew it will be hard for me to do the touch and go at uh, 57 uh, kilos. And I knew the run will be cool for me. So we discussed a lot with my coach and we said, okay, so I will do really quick single. But mentally it was hard also to see that all the other women were doing like touch and go. And then you are the last one on the, on the lane. So then you have to run, to run, to run, but it is what it is. So I know. Who are yeah what are my weakness so but the day, day two was hard <laughs> that's an interesting thing like if you perform good at at one day and you um climb up the heats you know you get to the better heats and then and then yeah i was talking to jen muir about the same exact thing she was finishing the first day like really good yeah or was it the second i don't i don't really know but She finished the day and she basically told me, yeah, but I knew that the first workout in the next morning will be a catastrophe and I'm in the first heat. It's the worst workout to be in the first heat for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really interesting. Are you like a, are you an athlete that um, likes to do the online things and uh, the open the quarters in your box against yourself and, and the clock or are you an athlete who wants to compete on the competition floor what suits you better mm, i think both are good yeah both are good for me but uh i prefer when for example at the summit it was really important for me to have all the other 
uh, good athletes just next to me also to see a bit how they move and uh, but yeah. also that they are human <laughs> because sometimes you are thinking okay so they are not human they are robots so you can you you will never be next to them because they are too too strong and at the end it, it's still possible so this was like a good thing but the online thing is really something less stressful so for example with the open the quarter and the semi if you have to to make them always on a in a certain location it will be really like tough for the travel and for everything but mm -hmm. i think i'm i'm fine with both uh yeah both methods so exactly when you, when you say that you um you realize that they're human was that um a big takeaway for you from from berlin yeah yeah really really because yeah i was only like seeing them on instagram or or youtube and everything and when you are next for example to sarah you're like in fact she's human and she also have emotion so and you feel a bit more like at their level so they are not like unreachable so this is also a yeah. good thing for, yeah to, to take away yeah interesting and was that um was that also helping you like um for, for these days I've, i think you just won the um You you Sorry. won the Swiss Nationals and then you won the European at the yeah, I3, exactly. didn't you? Yeah, exactly. Was that also helping you? Like, oh, I belong there and I can beat these guys and girls? Yeah, yeah because I remember like two or three weeks before the summit, I wrote to my coach. I say, hey, I think I'm not like, um, I, I don't belong to this field. I, I think mm -hmm. I was thinking that maybe it was like a mistake uh, or during the quarter it was like only movement that suits me so i was like okay so maybe i should not go because it will be like catastrophic i was thinking okay but you necessarily be you will be the last for sure because when you see all the others you are like okay so it yeah it won't be possible to to be competitive uh in that field but at the end really they are human and this is really something that in fact i never really realized it was like okay so i will never never Uh, reach this kind of level and at the end I was like really in the middle of the 60 uh, uh, yeah. women so which was quite good for me I think yeah were you happy with with that placement like 30s yes yeah. awesome <laughs> yeah and, and now you you recently like beat Nikki here at the nationals and who else was at the at the European I didn't like follow that at all Uh, Jana Gertz, I think she's German, and yeah. she she didn't make it for the semi, but she was like I think nine. She told me she was like ninety, so it was really limit limit. Yeah. Good she was there. She was there last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, she was at the semis last year. This year she didn't make it, but she's a uh, like she's the most like um. What, how do you say it? I think she's the most promising young athlete from Germany. Yeah, yeah, she's really, really good these days. Especially in weightlifting, yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> she's so strong. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Congrats on that titles. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. How is the how is this um these IF3 events like compared to like is okay the semi final is like the top of the top, but how is that that level at the women's field? in the IF3? Um, so all the women uh, was were quite good, but I think the only issue is that the top, top athletes are preparing for the games. For example, mm. yeah. Uh, Mathilde, okay. yeah. Mathilde Garnes, uh, who won the Worlds last year, for example, or other people. So it's like, not exactly the same than for the world because a lot of people told me ah but it will be really cool now to see you in the world championship but i say yeah but uh, it will be also more really really good people that will that will join so it's a bit interesting different. yeah i haven't thought about that at all interesting so where they where they're even like um girls coming from norway or was there was there any team uh no there was no There was no team from uh, from Norway. I think, Interesting. Yeah, no, no. There, I think they are really like only focusing on the on the games. I yeah, maybe it's yeah. I can imagine it's really too dangerous to make something like this just before the games. 
Interesting. And what are you um what are your plans for the for the remainder of the season? Are you planning on doing some throwdowns and events? Uh yeah, I will have the strength in depth in two weeks. Oh yeah. Which will be quite tough as well. And then <laughs> I will have Madrid throwdown also. Uh, which I heard it will be a heavy competition, so <laughs> it will be tough as well, but a good challenge. And then uh, some uh, more uh, yeah, national competition, but really in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, I will have the World Championship in Norway. And let's see also for Dubai, if uh, I will do the, trying to do the qualifier or not. Yeah. Yeah, I think Madrid will be, I don't know if they do the same as last year but if they do it's gonna be insane <laughs> it was so big last year there were so many athletes <laughs> yeah i heard i heard <laughs> I, alina i always ask my um my instagram followers if they have any questions yeah and there and there was one which which i was usually it's like i don't know like the girlfriends like or the boyfriends like oh how did you uh, meet such a nice boyfriend or does such a nice girlfriend or what's your max net or something something like really so okay i can ask that but that's not really fun but this one for you was really good and i even took it to the uh, to the other podcast i don't know who who asked it but the question was how long did it take to recover mentally and physically from the semi-final um i think physically it was like much shorter than mentally <laughs> because mm. at the end as i explained i was training really hard only on this workout during the previous weeks so yeah. i knew how it how it yeah how i feel and everything so it was not so hard uh the days just after the semi physically of course i took some rest days but yeah it wasn't so hard but mentally as explained it was like you have to realize all the things that just happened because during the the weekend You try a bit to switch off and then you you really have, have to take time also to just digest all these events, all the roller coaster, what, what was good, what was not so good. And uh, yeah, this was mentally, I think it was harder than physically. Mm -hmm. But once you soaked it all in, like, like you told me, like 30th place was really good and you saw that all the other girls are human. So I guess when it finally settled down, you're like really pumped to to move on and to the next season, or yeah, yeah, of course. I just finished this. I say okay, so I want really more because this year, as explained, I I didn't have like a concrete goal. It was really for me to see that I belong to this field. But the, I think it was the day after the summit. I say I want more. <laughs> so it was really like something that really um yeah gave. Me, gave me a lot in fact I really like yeah I don't know how to explain but it was really something great that happened in my mind to see that I belong to them and that it's at the end nothing is really impossible so I guess so. I, f I felt the same like even as a spectator you know <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah but it, it was my first um like big um CrossFit competition watching mm -hmm. And afterward, I was I was like, yeah, let's do 500 podcasts a day. I want, I want to dive into this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a favorite moment at the, at the semifinal? Mm, I think it's quite strange because it could be like my worst moment. But on the last day, um, we had the workout with the... Uh, the overhead, the uh, overhead squat with the row and with the seated legless rope climb. Yeah. And during the training, I w when I was doing this workout, I knew that it was limit that I couldn't do the last legless rope climb. And but I always managed to do it, even if it was like mm -hmm. really, really limit. And during this workout, I think I went a bit too fast at the beginning, and I did the first seated legless, and I say to, my, to myself, okay. I think it will be really hard today to make the last one. But of course, I continue. I did the third one. And then for the fourth one, it was done. I couldn't move on on this uh, on this rope. And I, I just like turning around, checking if uh, if the people that came f to, to support me were there. And all the people were like smiling and just say, just wait. And in fact, I was like, okay, so in fact, they are not... <laughs> 
disappointed because this was my first thinking what the people will think about me. And at the end, I saw all yeah. the people like smiling and everything. So I was like, okay, so, and this changed a lot because during Linda workout, I really felt so bad and really like a bit of shame, you know? And this um, rope, this rope climb really helped me to, in fact, realize that all the people are really supportive. And even if I'm not, uh, even if I will not be able to do this last rope climb, this won't define me. And at the end, after like three minutes of really doing nothing, I managed to do it uh, <laughs> still, <laughs> but I didn't finish the workout, which which was like really sad because during the training, I had really a good time, but I finished this workout with a smile, even if it was like the worst uh, workout, uh, if I see, if I compare to the training. So, and this was like a really good lesson to me that in fact, all the people were like so, so nice with me and uh, not judging at all. So, and this helped. Yeah. Lot. I think that workout was really like, um, like that for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you take Sarah for for example, like she crashed and burned on that yeah. on that workout, and but she was so. I think you saw that she was like mentally really destroyed. Yeah. But the crowd was like amazing. Like everyone was like, "Okay, she, she's fucked, but she tried. Let's cheer her on." So yeah, exactly. I think exactly. that was that was in the stands. That was that workout was electric. Mm -hmm. I really like that one for for everybody. Like you know. There were so many good, good like moments in that workout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, it it was hard. But I really yeah, like. Yeah. Sure. Finally, I was like, this is uh, I think the greatest lesson that I will have from from this weekend. Awesome. Did you have a lot of um people coming to support you? Um. Yes, I have like a small group that came directly from uh, from uh, our box. So it was it was really cool, but I I didn't had a lot of time to to like just check the the other uh, with them in the start, but uh, yeah. it was really cool. At least during this moment, I was so happy and glad that I just I just found them in the crowd. So I was like, ah, oh, cool. <laughs> awesome, yeah. I found the the atmosphere was just like amazing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think some. I think Clydesdale Media, like he was complaining that the um, American semifinals were like they were sold out. But uh, I don't know. He said that the European and the Australian semifinal they felt like a rock show. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that. I really like that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I'm so fascinated. You you already told it that you um only doing like CrossFit for three years now. Yeah, three and a half years now. Yeah. How have you found it? Um, in fact, I was since really my, I think I started sport at six years old, uh, doing gymnastics during oh. six years. Then I did a lot of different sports, really everything, triathlon, uh, climbing, volleyball, um, track and field, really everything. And just before CrossFit, I was doing long distance running marathon and I get injured and uh, my best friend like re said, like really long like like 100 kilometers and stuff it was a marathon 40 42 okay. kilometers yeah and, um yeah i had some issues with the legs and um, my best friend um just told me but maybe you should try something else at least during uh, the recovery and i say okay so i will maybe try something else and he was just like um giving me some workouts with wall ball with throw and with uh like more conditioning thing i was like ah that's cool and then slowly he tried to uh give me some weight i was like no no i will never <laughs> ever use weight uh, like barbell or like dumbbell this was like no not possible for me and uh he tried he tried so i tried as well and then he managed to convince me to go to one crossfit lesson and um i went it was the snatch so I say, I will never come back because I hate this. <laughs> and then I think it was three months later, he told me, no, but you should try. There is not only weightlifting, so you will be good. Because of course, for me, it was conditioning was really like um, a thing that I loved. And uh, weightlifting was something that I hated because I never, I never did fitness or something like this. So all the weights were like really heavy for me. But 
when I came back for the second time, I was like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe it's something cool. And then uh, I bought uh, 10 session cards. And I think after like one week, it was already over. I was already like, okay, this is something really, really cool. <laughs> and I think mainly because I always did a lot of sport. Uh, I, I was always good at everything, but never like um, the, the best. And mm -hmm. this was really like something cool because it was so general that it was perfect for me. I would, yeah, I'm quite good at everything, but I will never be the best at something. So more generalist than specialist. And at the end, it's exactly what you need to, to be for CrossFit. Interesting. Do you have any, do you have any siblings like brothers or sisters? Uh, yeah, I have two sisters. Oh, wow. Are you the oldest or? Uh, one is oldest and one is youngest. Oh, so you're still in the middle. Yeah, I'm in the middle. Yeah. Is that is that the reason why you um compete? Um, <laughs> But I'm always fascinated, like when the athletes told me how they found the sport. But there, I'm always thinking, so yeah, okay. But there must be this this moment when you like realize, oh, I'm actually quite good at it. I I'm gonna compete in this, or for some, it's like from the beginning they they find this and they're like yeah i want to go to the games <laughs> so it's no, awesome. i never told me i want to go to the games because this was like impossible and unreachable but uh when i started crossfit i directly knew that i will do it for something i will not just train to of course i have fun during training but i need to have like something really concrete and for what i work on so since the beginning i really knew that one day I will be really good <laughs> and I will compete. So this was like quite clear for me from the beginning. But it was like this, I think, in all the sports that I, I did, in gymnastics, in uh, yeah, in volleyball, in everything, never at a such level, but I always did a lot of uh, competitions. Interesting. Since you're six years old, you started with gymnastics? Yeah. And why did you stop that? Uh, because of this, yeah, I think um, I had too many different sports at the same time because mm. I remember that I had gymnastics, track and field, volleyball, climbing, and at the end I say, okay, so maybe I, I need to stop a bit something to be better at something else. So I just tried uh, to find balance, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting background. Like climbing is like, I think it's it's really good for as a background. And of course, gymnastics. I think gymnastic is the most uh, yeah. important thing that I have in background for, for now CrossFit because all the movements, uh, especially for the gymnastics, were like really easy to learn for me. And uh, even for other movements, when you know a bit where you your body is in the space, it's always yeah. like really uh, a big advantage. You have the balance and you have the coordination like already ingrained in you. Are there like... The gymnastics movement in CrossFit, are these even like, is it is this gymnastics for you or is this like some basic shit that you, you don't even have to learn? I love that, <laughs> but it's unfortunately <laughs> not the thing that I need to focus on right now. <laughs> so it's yeah. a bit like, yeah, put on the side for now. But of course, when I see ring muscle up, bar muscle up, and stand rock or even a uh, Yeah, it's even greater if you have like a ramp or something special like a ring complex. So this is like something I really love. But unfortunately, it's not anymore my focus. Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. So what's... If you you said that um, you think the games were like unreachable in the past, but now you saw that that all the all the others are humans like you. So yeah. what's what's the goal for the... What's the goal for this season and maybe like in the next years? In the next year would be great to slowly be like more in the 11th uh, place in 11 ranking on, on the summit. So of course, if I can make it to the games it would be really awesome. But I um, don't know for this season because what, what I think is really limiting me is like the strength and this is taking a lot of time so it's not yeah. like a skill that you need to learn it's really like 
taking time. And for this, you have to, of course, you have to work hard, but you also have to recover even harder because this is something that I didn't really understood before. So I was like squatting every day. And one day, so matter me now, but I don't think it re- it's the good way to, to be better. <laughs> so now I, I really, um, really focusing on this and, uh, but it's taking time. So I don't know if I will be able to, to be at the games this season, but of course it will be like amazing. Interesting. I'm going to follow your path. <laughs> I'm excited what's what's ahead for you. I have this book from the, I don't know if it's from the 70s or or the 60s even. Um, it's funny because you said that you squatted all the time. I have this book. I read it recently. I, have, I don't know why I have it, actually. It's called like Squat Every Day. And the guy is it's like in the book, yeah, you have to squat every day. Just just put like five pounds on on every day. And I was reading it. I'm, no. <laughs> no. No, no, I don't think no. that's <laughs> That's outdated. That's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alina, thanks for coming on. Thank you. It was fun. Thank it was fun having you. Yeah, it was a pleasure for me. Let's see where is